Hey traders and investors, welcome to part three of this swing trading for beginners series that we're doing here on the channel. Make sure to watch part one and part two if you haven't already. Those are going to be linked down below in the description. Here in part three, we're going to start talking about when to sell shares of your stock. This is going to include both risk management or cutting losses, as well as when to lock in profits on your successful swing trades. And we're also going to touch on the topic of position sizing, which in my opinion is one of the most underlooked aspects of successful trading. So to start off, I want to cover the topic of when to lock in profits. This is something that a lot of traders don't really talk about because um, you know, they assume that a profitable trade in locking in profits at any time is better than taking a loss. And while that is true, obviously no one wants to take a loss, it's also important to make the most out of your winning trades so that way all of your winning trades aren't very small when compared to your losing trades. Okay, so when we're talking about locking in profits, it's important to kind of come up with a trade plan before you even get into the trade itself. This trade plan is going to use some very basic technical analysis to find these ideal exit prices or these profit targets. In order to do that, what you're looking for is something like a resistance level, trend line resistance, a recent high with high volume, a past support level, and so on and so forth. Anything that can indicate that the stock might reverse back to the downside is going to be a potential profit target to use to start exiting and locking in profits on your swing trades. Okay, so if we take this example here with the daily chart for the stock TCBP, um, we can see that this is a nice slow and steady uptrending stock. We have a level of trend line support, so this would be a potential swing trade just based on that chart pattern alone. One of the very common ways that traders will take advantage of momentum in the stock market would be to look for a trend line like we see here and then to simply buy into the dips near that trend line support. Now if you're coming up with a trade plan for this and you're looking for a potential area to exit and lock in profits, again what we want to look for most of the time is going to be some kind of overhead resistance. We could see back here in January of 2023 there was a double top here at about $9.50 or so. Um, so that double top is naturally going to be a level of resistance. And what we would want to do is we would want to make sure that we're locking in some profits up here over $9 per share if the stock happens to reach that level. And the reason for that is because historically, once the stock gets up to that $9.50 area, it tends to reverse back to the downside. So all we're doing by locking in profits here over $9 per share is protecting ourselves and making sure that we don't let our winning trade turn back into a losing trade. Now another example here is with Wish. Again, this is the daily chart, so every one of these candlesticks is representing one entire day of price action. Um, this is a different example because although there's not necessarily a level of resistance here at about $1.10 per share, we can see that if we look at the volume here, these blue bars down here at the bottom of the chart represent the volume for each of these days. Uh, the volume here on this day when there was this big spike up to $1.10, was significantly larger than any of the volume in the previous days. So what happens a lot of times when there are these days with high relative volume is the high and the low can often act as levels of support and resistance. So even though this hasn't been retested since it formed, this high up here at about $1.10, because of the high relative volume that traded on this day, is likely going to act as a level of resistance. So if you're buying into a stock and you see that there was a recent high with a very high relative volume, just like we see here with Wish, uh, you would want to use this area up here as a potential profit target to start locking in some profits. Okay, and that is the general idea of how I look to lock in profits on a lot of my swing trades. Now, I will say that it is important to lock in profits into these key levels on your charts, but in order to help you maximize your profits, what you can do is you can plan to only sell some of your shares into that profit target, and then you can look to hold the rest of your shares and the rest of your position in hopes that the stock is going to break out above that resistance level and continue running up to new highs. So going back to this example with TCBP, again using the $9.50 area as our profit target because it is a past resistance level, um, what we could do is we could look to sell maybe half of our shares up here at let's say $9.20 and then we would hold the other half of our shares to kind of let this play out and to see if it's going to break through that resistance and continue to run to new highs. If that happens, obviously that's going to help us maximize our returns on the trade. And if it doesn't happen, we could simply look to lock in the rest of our profits at a slightly lower price once that resistance level has been again confirmed. 
Now on the other side of the spectrum, cutting losses is going to be a little bit different. You're still going to want to use some basic technical analysis. The difference here is that we're going to be looking for weakness in the stock to tell us when we should sell out of the position and cut our losses on the trade. So when the stock that you're in no longer is moving according to your plan and is starting to show signs of technical weakness, uh, a technical weakness can be breaking under support or trendline support. It can be forming lower highs, moving under VWAP, and so on and so forth. Um, all of those are bearish signs for a stock, and all of those would be a good indicator that now is a good time to sell out of your shares and cut losses on the trade. As brutal as it is, and as much as no one wants to take a loss on a trade, it is very important to manage your risk, and it's important to look for these signs to quickly get out of a losing trade before it turns into a much bigger loss. One quick example that I just noticed here today, this was a stock that I was trading and we were trading in the Market Master Group. We could see this stock was trading with a clear level of trendline support. So we were able to, in the Market Master Group, take advantage of this for a quick day trade um, as it was holding this trend and it was starting to break above VWAP here. We had some team members that were buying in in the 650s and 660s and then we locked in profits into this big spike up here up into the 760s. Now with that being said, if there was someone that maybe bought into this a little bit late and was holding a position up here at 720 for example, they could take a quick look at this chart, see that there was a clear level of trendline support here and at the time when this stock was trading at $7.20, that trendline support was at about $6.90. So they could say that if it starts to break down below that trendline support, they would cut losses on the trade. And as simple as it is, that is exactly what you want to do when you're using these technical levels to manage your risk for a trade. And we can see that as soon as it broke down below that trendline support, it had a big sell off to the downside, fell back down below the VWAP and is probably going to continue lower throughout the rest of the day. Another example that I want to quickly talk about is the stock JSPR. Um, we can see that there is a pretty clear level of support here um, at about $1.50. The stock was trading and consolidating above this level for the past month or so. And this was actually alerted in the Market Master Group for a swing trade in the 170s uh, back about a month ago. And now it doesn't look like it moved much since then, but there was recently a big spike up into the 250s in pre-market. So we had some traders make a nice profit on this trade, but it is all the way back down to about our entry price at the time. And I'm mentioning this and using this as an example because if this stock was to break down below this 150 level, that would be a very bearish sign for the stock because 150 was holding as support for a pretty extended period of time now. And if you think about it, you have to kind of consider all of the people that bought within this time frame above that $1.50 level. All of those people are going to be quick to start selling and cutting losses on the trade if it starts to break down below that level. So all of the selling that's going to come in at that price is going to lead to a huge amount of supply in this stock. And after all, the stock market moves solely on supply and demand. So all of that supply is going to drive the price lower and lower and lower. And once it breaks down below that 150 level, we will probably see it back down to a dollar per share or lower in a pretty short period of time. When it comes to managing risk, I recommend placing price alerts or stop loss orders to help manage your risk and to quickly exit a losing trade. Most brokerage accounts and trading platforms will have the option to place price alerts, which will then notify you when the price of any stock reaches a certain price, whether that be to the upside or to the downside. So if you're someone that can't actively monitor your swing trades, if you have maybe a full-time job, and you're not able to check up on your swing trades very often, it can be very helpful to have these price alerts set so that way you at least are notified when the stock is getting close to your risk level. The alternative to this is to use a stop loss order, but the only issue with stop loss orders is that they do not work during extended hours trading. So pre-market and after hours are not going to activate your stop loss orders, even if the price of the stock reaches your stop price, but nonetheless, they are still great for managing risk and they are going to help you to get out of your positions, even if you're not actively watching the stock market at the time. Now, moving on to one of the most important aspects of risk management in any kind of trading. This is often overlooked. Most people just think about cutting losses and they don't necessarily think about the position size. Your position size is simply how many shares of the stock that you're going to buy. This should be determined by your entry price and your risk level, as well as whatever amount of money you're comfortable risking on any given trade. So for example, if your maximum loss that you're willing to take on any given trade is $500,
and your risk level is 50 cents away from your entry price, the maximum amount of shares that you would want to buy in that stock would be 1,000 because 1,000 shares multiplied by your level of risk per share at 50 cents is going to give you your maximum loss of $500. It's very common for new traders to not do this and wonder why their losses are so large even though they're investing their entire account into every single one of their trades. Every trade is different and based on the charts that you're looking at, sometimes your risk level is going to have to be further away, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be risking more money on that trade itself. At the end of the day, it's just going to come down to your position sizing. All right, so hopefully you found some value in this video and learned a thing or two about when to sell your shares at either a profit or a loss, as well as how to find the proper position size for your trades. If you did, please make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on part four of the series and other future trading and investing lessons. And if you want to learn more about day trading, swing trading, and long-term investing, or join us in our daily interactive trading group, you can find more information on that at my website, Master the Market, which will be the first link down below in the description. But anyway, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed and good luck with your trading.